We talked about three general climate zones, polar, temperate, and tropical. Now we're going to focus on specific climate zones that are more realistic. Remember, climate is on a 30-year average. This is very different from weather. So when we talk about climate, we're talking about something that generally stays the same over a long period of time. And if we look over maybe 50, 60, 100 years, we may see a change in the climate. But we're not talking about a day by day. That's weather. So climate zones are largely determined by two main factors, temperature and rainfall. The Köppen climate classification system focuses on temperature and rainfall. Generally, you're going to have majority of your warmer temperatures and rainfall in the tropic zones. So generally around the equator, you're going to have a higher temperature and a lot of rain. Now, there are areas in which uh, we're going to have lots of evaporation. It's going to go up, move, and then rain in a different area of the tropic zone. And if we're having a lot of evaporation at one area, it may leave more of a desert area. Now that can happen, but generally along that trop those two tropical zones, you're going to have high heat and lots of rainfall. Now the Köppen climate classification is a colored system. This basically identifies by um, your reds and oranges and yellows for a higher temperature and also identifies lots of rain. So I'll show you a picture of that in a second. The six that are listed there are generally your six main climates. Some resources combine them and identify them as only five main climates and some may even separate them a little more and they may say seven climates. Now another name for mountains would also be highlands, lands that are high. So um, we're going to take a look at these six and we're going to actually divide them up a little further than what you see here and it'll make sense a little bit later on. So you can see uh, we have tropical, we have dry, another name for dry would be arid or desert. Then we have temperate marine, this means near water, this is going to be a Mediterranean area. Then we have temperate continental, this is more inland, this is more cold subpolar during the winter times. Um, then we have uh, the polar and then we have the highlands or the mountains. Here you have a general uh, color coding pattern of the different climate zones. This is going to be going more based on the Köppen classification identifying your different areas. You can see this is more realistic than just polar, temperate, and tropical, this breaks things down because you do have mountains in different areas and if you have mountains, highlands in different areas, most likely you're gonna have a different climate just because the mountains may be in the tropical area or in the temperate area doesn't mean it's always gonna be like that. So here's uh, a very specific or more accurate Köppen climate classification chart so you can see at the bottom, tropical, dry, temperate, and you can see there's different sections or degrees of the tropical, the dry, the temperate, and the cold, and even the polar. Now, this is a identification of the temperature. You can see along that equator, generally, it's going to be very hot. And then as we move away from the equator, it's getting uh, greener and then blue. So that's focused on temperature, and we said, we said temperature and rainfall are the two key factors for climate. Here is a picture of precipitation. You can see along that equator, lots of precipitation happening there. Now, at the very bottom, you can see a chart, and on the chart, you have a line graph and a bar graph. This chart is called a climograph. It measures both temperature and rainfall. What I need you to know is that the bar graphs are the bar graphs are identifying precipitation or rainfall, while the line graph identifies temperature. Okay, so make sure you know that line graph temperature, 
bar graphs rain. So this is a climograph. And I'm going to be showing you some pictures of some climographs. So let's first talk about the tropical climate. The tropical climate can be divided into two parts. The tropical wet zone and the tropical wet and dry. So the focus here is the tropical is usually, if you look at the climograph, lots of rain and very high temperature. You can see the line graph, high temperature pretty much all year round. It's more average. It's going to be at the equator, so it's generally going to stay hot pretty much all year round. Lots of rain. Some rain picks up May and June, but generally lots of rain. Let's look at tropical wet. Tropical wet, common sense. Wet, it's going to be raining all year round pretty much. It's going to be heavy rain, hot temperatures. So tropical hot, wet, lots of rain. But if you look at tropical wet and dry, you have a couple locations in South America, Africa, and India. Tropical wet and dry not only is talking about heavy rain, but it will also talk about not a lot of rain. So there's going to be a shift. The heavy rain is going to be in the summer, while the dry areas or the droughts would be more during the winter times. And this is due because of the prevailing wind shifts. Now let's look at the dry climates. The dry climates, also known as desert or arid, can be divided into two parts, arid and semi-arid. The arid or desert is mainly going to be very hot. It's going to be generally um, desert. It's definitely going to have uh, lots of heat, not a lot of rain. Now the semi-arid is generally going to be a transition between the desert and your forest areas. So you're going to have some more rain, a lot more rain. Um, it's going to get a little bit uh, colder, uh, not as hot, but uh, the focus here for the semi-arid, more rain. We're increasing the rainfall. So it's not as dry as arid, okay? but it's not as uh, wet as tropical. If you look at the climograph at the bottom, you can actually see the basic dry climate, low rainfall, high temperatures. Now the temperature peaks in the summer, so it's not as flat as the tropical. So the desert climates do get a little colder in the winter time, but the focus is not a lot of rain. Okay, the temperate mild winter climate focuses on these mild winters. So basically it's not as cold in the winter time. There are three examples of this, the Mediterranean, the subtropical, and the marine west coast. So the Mediterranean is going to focus on an area near Greece, an area that's on the water. So it does not have uh, very hot, it does not have very cold winters, it's more mild, so that's the key, it's very mild. The subtropical, however, that would be in some areas uh, in South America where it's going to be on the east coast. Now some subtropical areas would also be in Asia on the east coast, so the focus is east coast would be subtropical. This is close to the tropics, but it's not as hot and as rainy. But the focus is these are only on the East Coast. Now the last one, the Marine West Coast, it's further from the equator and these are generally warmed up by the ocean currents on the West Coast. The temperate cold winters, so we just talked about temperate warm, the temperate cold winters are generally going to be more uh, northern hemisphere, this is going to have your temperate deciduous trees, uh, your trees that lose their leaves. Uh, this could be in northern United States and in Canada. So you can actually see on the climograph, basically in the winter it gets cold, in the summer it's warm. Uh, we don't have a ton of rain, it's more average on the rain, but uh, you know, generally warm summer but cold winters. Then the last one, 
we're going to focus on are the polar climates. And the polar climates we're going to divide into the ice caps and the tundra. So the ice caps are pretty much at the poles. Okay, very, very cold. Uh, the summer temperatures usually aren't above zero degrees Celsius. Uh, now remember, Celsius is different from Fahrenheit. The tundra, however, are closer to the temperate deciduous forests or the temperate cold climate. So tundra is closer to the temperate cold. Uh, these summer temperatures are a little warmer. Okay, This would be northern Canada and Russia.